Hello and welcome to another Q&A video from the Reaper blog. I am John, and the YouTube channel just reached 2,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing, and thanks to everyone that has been watching the videos, liking and commenting, and everyone that has donated over the last couple months. I want to remind everyone that there's a tip jar on the website, so if you like what I'm doing, you want to support, you can send a dollar or two, and it will go towards hosting and paying for my time to create the content and editing and all that kind of stuff. Okay, let's get into the questions. First question is, what theme are you using? I try to keep with the default for any tutorials, but um, the one I use for my own stuff is called Alternate. It's made by Lambda. It's a nice modern looking theme that doesn't look so much like an analog console. I'll have a link in the show notes to where to get it. It's a really great theme. I've tried many others over the years and I keep coming back to this one. I do like to do some customization to it. If you go into the theme editor, some of the things that I like to change, the colored bar on the selected media item, I'll usually change that to blue, and the active media tag, I'll change that to a red. So if I hit apply, you can see there's a blue bar at the top of the item showing which item is selected. And if there's multiple takes, you'll see a red line on the one that's active. Sometimes I'll change the track background, make it a little bit lighter. And mostly I'll edit the um, grid lines. Start a measure, I'll use, I'll use a purple, I'll use that blue color. I'll use like a, a lighter gray for the uh, in-betweens. And it's subtle, but I find it helps those grid lines stand out from the other elements in the items. There's a lot of great themes out there. This is the one that I use the most. Next question is tips for processing lead guitars. There's so much you can do with lead guitars. Uh, I think the person that asked this had actually recorded everything kind of with the same tone. So we had two rhythm guitars and the lead with basically the same settings. I don't know if he changed guitars, pickups, uh, amp, cabinet, microphone, all those things go towards creating contrast, more differences between your rhythm and lead tones. In the mix, there's a lot you could do. You could keep your rhythm guitars fairly dry, no delays, no reverbs, and then uh, use those effects on the leads. You can use EQ, you can use ducking compression to push the rhythm guitars down, a couple dB whenever the lead guitar is there. Anything you can do to just create differences between those instruments uh, will make it stand out in the mix. Next question is, when do I use Save As and when do I use a snapshot? I do a Save As every day, every time I open up a project with a new number and I might add like um, bass guitar or guitars if I'm doing that for that day. Usually for tracking sessions, I'll change it for each day. Uh, I'll also do snapshots if I'm changing and making any drastic changes to the mix, making an entirely new vocal chain or something like that and I want the option to go back without having to reload the project it just makes snapshots before and after and you can easily um, a b compare things now, ultimately it's up to you what you find is best for your workflow basically the point of that video was just to show that the snapshots function exists with all the features in reaper and the sws extensions it's really easy to overlook stuff Next question is how do you hide the marker lines from the arrange view? So if we're looking at this and we change our marker line Z order, currently it's on over items. So the grid lines are on top of the items. We set this to through items. Now it's on top of the item edges, but behind the waveforms. So that's through items and then under items pushes it to the back can see the item edges are on top of those grid lines. The same thing happens with the grid line Z order. Uh, Z order means the depth. Next question is, what are the different monitor input and recording input modes? All right, so we're back in the default theme. If I right click on the record enable button, you see lots of different options for recording input, MIDI input, recording the output, record disable, and then monitor input and tape auto style. So let's start with the monitoring input. So monitor input means that uh, if the record enable button and the monitor buttons are clicked, then you will listen to the input of the track. 
Monitor input tape auto style is a mode that you'll use with uh, your master recording modes. So time selection, auto punch, or auto punch selected items. So if you had a time selection, you're in this uh, time selection auto punch mode. You press record, it's going to play back here. You're going to hear this item, but the input will be muted. Until it gets to this time selection, it will switch to record. It'll switch on the input. And then at the end of the time selection, you will hear what was already recorded and it will mute the input. Now with the recording modes, standard one will just record. And if there's already something there, it defers to your new recording that overlaps existing items options here. By default, it's going to split the item and then create a new take. The normal recording mode is what you're going to use most of the time. And this MIDI overdub option is great for if you're doing like uh, you record the left hand and then you record the right hand part the second time it loops over. Rather than creating takes, it would record into the same item. It would just add to that recording. And MIDI replace uh, will play back until you start adding notes. Touch for replace will only replace when you're playing and latch replace will only start replacing when you start adding notes. There's slight differences between these modes, but worth knowing and worth experimenting with. Record output records the output of the track. That's after effects and after the fader. Usually you'll do this on tracks that don't have any audio on them. So like buses, um, effects returns, and things like that. Record input force format is kind of a special case scenario. It's very rare you'd use this. One thing I can think of is if you have only one mic, but you want it recorded as a stereo item, you would uh, do record input for stereo. Now record disable input monitoring only is useful if you have an input that you need active all the time, but don't want to record it. Two things come to mind for this. The first one would be a talkback mic that you need active all the time, but you don't want to start recording and looping and things like that. The other thing, if you're using hardware MIDI devices, so you use a MIDI controller to record your MIDI, but at the same time, you're sending that MIDI out to an external device and monitoring the sound of that on a track. You don't want to record the output of that device until the MIDI is finalized, cleaned up, quantized, whatever you want to do with it. Um, that keeps that channel open so you can hear in real time those changes. And then once you're done, you, you'd probably choose the record output stereo option. I hope that clears things up. There's a lot of options there and they're a little confusing. Once you start working with them, uh, you'll realize that you really only need one or two of them and the other ones are kind of special cases, and just ask if you are confused again. All right, that's five questions answered. Thanks for watching. If you want to have a question answered on one of these Q&A sessions, leave a comment below, and uh, I will try to make it into an upcoming video. Once again, thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, and check out reaperblog.net for more tutorials. Thanks, guys. Bye.